All right, let's jump in. Today we're going to go over leak code 1346. Check if n and its double exist. The problem states, given an array of integers, check if there exist two integers, n and m, such that n is the double of m. And it uh, goes a little bit more formally over there. Um, I won't go over that. Let's take a look at the constraints here. So first constraint is the length of the array is between 2 and 500 inclusive. Um, so we'll always have at least two values. So that shows us that we will always need to check. We can't do any, um, any fancy shenanigans like if the length is 1, just return false. Um, we can't do anything like that. The second constraint here um, is stating that all of the values within the given array will be between minus 10 to the 3 and positive 10 to the 3. So what that should tell you is that we do not need to perform any validation for potential overflows. We won't have any really big values and we won't have any really big small values, uh, negative values. All right, so we're going to jump in here. I've uh, brought over the function already. So if we do some, we're going to do some work first. If we get to the end of that function, um, we should just return false. That means we haven't found what we're looking for. So we'll always return false at the end. So the goal here, we are trying to iterate through each value within this array and see if any of the other values are the double of our current value. For example, top example one here, we iterate through, we hit 10. Now we check all of the other values to see if they are doubled to being 10. So we look at 2. What's the double of 2? 2 times 2 is 4. So that's false. We go on to the next one. Um, 5 times 2 is 10. So we've just found our double value there, and we would return to, uh, we would return true. <laughs> so, okay, so let's iterate through. So we have an index, we have a value, and the range R. Uh, we don't need the value here. And for that i, we are going to check all of the other values. So for j is i plus 1. Uh, we're going to say j less than len r for all of the other values. And what is our condition that we're looking for? We are testing if r i is, we're seeing if R J is the double of I. Pardon, we're seeing if R I is the double of R J. So uh, two times R J. Yep. And if that condition is met, we are returning true. So this works. Um, let's bring the test case over. And we'll run this. We get a true. So this is working. Um, one thing I can see here, ri may be the double of rj, but what if rj is the double of ri? We're not checking that condition right now. So that's um, what I mean is, what if it's flipped here? If we run this, we should still get true. So with a current algorithm here, we're going to get false. Yep. So we need to add a second condition here. We need to see if r the double of um, R i is R j. So if this condition is met, we are good to go. Yep. All right. So there's our first solution. I'm confident with that. Let's run it. And let's go over the complexity really quickly. So time complexity here, we're touching everything twice. Um, worst case, so that's O N squared. And space complexity, we're not using any additional space. So time is N squared. Space is constant, we're not, um, we're not using any additional space. So that is our first solution here. And let's see if we can improve on that. Let's try um, with this kind of problem here, you've, you're checking if you've seen, if you visited anything. So let's see if you can reduce the time complexity. Let's take our function here. And usually for reducing time complexity, we need to track visited elements. So let's 
Um, let's build out a map here. Let's call this scene. And we are going to keep track of if we've seen values. So if we've seen a value, we're just going to keep it true or false in there. And we're going to iterate through again here. So I comma V and range R. And the condition this time, um, sure, we'll keep, we'll keep value this time. We'll, we don't care about index. So if we've seen that value, if we've seen the double of that value, we can return true. Okay, so there's the first case outside. We're going to return false. All right. So we're going to visit every element in the array, O, N. And if we've seen the double of that element, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to just set... We're just going to store that we have seen that value. Okay, so this is the first case that works for 10, 5, right? Let's run that. So we get true, but this should fail on, yeah, so that fails on that second one. So we need that same approach here, or scene v over 2. Um, and that should, yeah, so that fixes that issue. So one thing here, you're working with integer division. So there's going to be some rounding that goes on. We want to prevent any case where it gets rounded incorrectly up or down um, to the value we're looking for. So we want to prevent cases like that. So let's, let's make sure that whenever we divide by 2, we can, um, we can know that it is actually divisible by two first. So we can say this. So it's divisible by two and we've seen um, the, the half of it. So that should also fix this. Okay, let's run this here run it. Okay, so that works. And let's submit. Okay, yep. So we see there's our second working solution. And this one is going to be time of n space n. Right, so here's our space that we're taking up, and worst case, we could have seen everything. Um, so space n. Um, just to kind of go over this one more time for this section here, let me try to get an example. Um, so we'll take seven for example. Um, can we try four? Let's get rid of this part first. So this is giving us true. Okay, let's say one. Yep. So this is giving us true here. Um, this is the case I was talking about. This is why we need the uh, modulo to the modulus to check um, to ensure that it's an even number, that it's divisible by two. So in this case here, we're hitting um, we're hitting seven, and we're dividing seven by two, and it is being rounded up to four here. And so that's causing this, this issue here. We should be getting false. There's no, there's no n such that um, n times two is an n. There, that case does not get met in this array, but it's because we do not have, we should only check this case when we're dealing with even numbers. So what is that? V two zero, okay. And Let's run that, and that should give us our false. Yeah, so there's that check. Um, that's why we need that um, that check there. And this is something, if you don't see this at first, this is something that you should ideally, during an interview, um, this is something that you should find as you're walking through. So typically, you could write out a naive on time, um, in time, in space algorithm like this. Um, but typically you wouldn't see like an edge case like this, or perhaps you wouldn't think of that immediately. That's fine. That's normal. Um, you would find this as you test it and as you walk through uh, different combinations. 
All right.